Hi, everybody. Barry wants to say a few words. <clears throat> Do I have to stop there? Well, Barry, there is a story to get to, and it's a long one today. Oh, okay. Anyway, I, I wish I could taste, because then I would have pancakes and maple syrup. I know that some of you guys are doing maple syruping at home, and some did with some with, with Paul, and some did some with um, 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 Doug, and some people went on field trips. So here's a book about maple sugaring. Thanks, Barry. It's called Sugaring by Jesse Haas. The pictures are by Joss A. Smith. I think what I'll do is show you the pictures and then read it because it's quite a bit of text. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Gramp and Nora are gathering sap, cold nights and sunny days, and that's another reason I chose this book because that's the sort of week it is weather-wise. That sugaring weather says Gramp. Four buckets hang on one big maple tree. Gramp takes a bucket down and pours the sap into Nora's pail. Then he hangs the bucket back up on the tree Sap drips into it, tap, tap, tap. Gramp empties more buckets into his pails. Tap, 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 tap. Come up, Gramp tells the horses and they pull the tank closer. Their hooves sink deep in the snow. Their breath makes a cloud. Sweat rolls from under Bonnie's collar and down Stella's nose. Whoa, Gramp says, and he pours the sap into the tank. One pail, two. Gramp waits while Nora drinks from the third pail and he drinks a little too. Sap tastes good, like cold, sweet water. Can I give Bonnie and Stella a drink? Nora asks, they're working hard. <laughs> Not from the pail, Gramp says. They'll want to stop at every tree. I need them to stop where I say. Sometimes horses are a bit finicky. Nora cups her hands. She dips some sap from the pail and she hurries to Bonnie and Stella. The sap drips through her fingers. Bonnie and Stella lick with their big pink tongues, but they only get a tiny taste. It's hard to give sap to horses, Gramp says. Never mind, they'll get plenty of hay for lunch. But they get hay all the time, Nora says. Sap is special. And you might notice that the Gramps has a Boston Red Sox cap on. When the sap is all gathered, Gramps drains, Gramp drains it into the holding tank. After lunch, he starts a fire in the sugar house. Sap from the holding tank flows into the long pans and begins to boil. Gramp tells Nora horse stories. They feed the fire and sing songs. Slowly, the sap at the end of the pan turns brown. When it's almost dark out, Gramp goes to get more wood. He gives Nora a tin cup of cream. You know what to do, he says. I'll be right back. Nora stands on a heavy stump, high enough to see inside the pan. She watches the brown bubbles. Will they get, are they getting higher? All at once, the bubbles lift. They almost boil over the top of the pan, but Nora's ready. She dips her finger into the cream and she flicks a tiny drop into the cream, into the bubbles. With a sigh, they whoosh back down. I once tried boiling sap, not very much sap though, and it must have done that boiling over thing and um, burned the pan. It wasn't my pan, I was embarrassed. The horse's hooves crunch the snow. Gramp drives them closer to the sugar house. Whoa, he says, and hurries inside. It boiled up, Nora said. It's almost ready, Gramp says. He dips his scoop into the pan and holds it up to watch the drips. The horses puff outside the door. A couple more minutes. He dips and watches, dips and watches, until the syrup slides off the scoop in one smooth sheet. All right, Gramp says, and he opens the faucet on the side of the pan. The thick brown syrup pours into a kettle. At the other end of the pan, clear new sap flows in to replace it. Gramp shuts off the faucet. He pours some syrup into a glass and sets it in the snow to cool. Nora can hardly wait to taste it. Maple syrup is even more special than sap. 
When the syrup is cool enough, Grandpa and Nora drink some. It's so sweet, they can only take little sips. Oh, that's so good. I thought that part was going to be about sugar snow. Oh, they set the glass into the snow. I've heard of pouring it onto the snow. Maybe they'll mention that. Bonnie and Stella watch through the door. Huh. Bonnie, Bonnie and Stella should get a taste, Nora says. They brought the sap in and they brought the wood. She pours some syrup into her hand. It's warm and sticky and dribbles through her fingers. Nora holds her hand out to Bonnie. Careful, Gramps says. Bonnie licks and licks. She thinks maple syrup is special too. Suddenly, Nora feels Bonnie's teeth. Ow! She pulls her hand away. Okay? Gramp asks. Nora nods. Your hand was so sweet, she thought. It must be candy. Stella points her ear. She wants syrup too, but Nora's afraid to give her any. T -t Tell you what. Gramp says, take this kettle of syrup to Graham and tell her we want something we can give a horse. She'll know what we mean. Graham puts the syrup in the stove, but she won't tell Nora what she's making. It'll be a surprise for you and the horses. So Nora takes supper down to Graham and they keep boiling long past Nora's bedtime. When they come back, the kettle of syrup is gone and the kitchen smells sweet and mapley. The next morning after breakfast, Graham brings a pan from the pantry. Don't look yet. She cuts something into squares and gives a square to Nora. Maple sugar, Nora says. We don't make it often, Graham says. Maple sugar is special. But so are horses, says Nora. She bites off a piece that tastes so good. It makes the backs of the back corners of her mouth water. She takes two more squares from the pan. Take one for Graham too, Graham says. Bonnie and Stella are hitched to the sled. They point their ears at Nora. Nora holds her hand flat so her fingers are out of the way. I learned that one. Bonnie and Stella's whiskers tickle and their breath goes whoosh. Their long lips fumble up the sugar. Crunch, 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 crunch. They nod their heads as they chew. Happy now, Gramp says. Yes, said Nora. She climbs up beside him. Gramp gives her the reins and she gives him a piece of maple sugar. And they drive out into, <clears throat> out into the woods to get more sap. The end. Later I'll record a song that I learned from the Amadons about uh, maple sugar. Bye.